Hi, so I've had a slight redesign. It's only a redesign of that um, new, new um, solar cell I was talking about, and that's it. I've redesigned it into that. Now, it doesn't look like there's anything on it, which is really cool. But clearly, I've been testing this this morning, and so when I do the demonstration for you, you'll see that, in fact, there is something on there. Now, um, the reason I redesigned it, really, was to do with some of the thoughts that I'd been having about these kind of things. Now, when you look at a traditional solar cell, it's essentially three plates. You have a flat plate current collector, some kind of um, solar active, photoactive material, and then another flat plate that is um, see-through on the top of it, because when the sunlight comes through, or the light comes through, wax this material, it essentially knocks out an electron. You've got to get that electron out there to get it to do some useful work before it recombines. So there's a big problem in having it enough of um, a chance of getting the electron out before it recombines. And the way they traditionally do that is to make this distance very, very thin. That way the current collectors can grab it and whiz it off before it can do anything else. And that means you get these large flat panels with the big old current collector behind it and you've got a transparent conductive oxide on front, they're usually very rigid, this TCO, which is usually in tin oxide incidentally, is very expensive, they're quite fragile, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, and it made me think, okay, well, can we rethink this? Because if we don't have to have these big flat old panels, then we can put it onto any substrate and make it flexible. So the rethought went along these lines. All we need is some flexible flat panel that we're going to put everything on, so a bit of plastic sheet. And then we need a couple of electrodes to collect everything. And we want to make sure we've got directionality. We want to make sure it goes only one way. So let's utilise the work function. Let's put one in copper, one in aluminium, and we'll be pretty sure it's going to go only one way. Now if we coat this with our photoactive material, we only have one problem left. How to get it all out of there quickly enough. And I was thinking, hang on a sec, I've got a bucket load of graphene, let's chuck some graphene in there. And that's exactly what I did. So I took the active material, added 5% of graphene in there, whipped it all up with a household blender and painted it on the bit of plastic that you saw. So the idea is here that the graphene forms a whole little load of connected wires between those two with the active material sitting on the connecting wires. So effectively what we've done is take that flat panel, swap it around and spread it out. We've still got a whole lot of little wires in there, but we've got our photoactive material in there connected to those little wires. And we all know how quickly graphene transports things. So now, when the sunlight hits that flat surface, that electron can be whizzed off the graphene and out through the current collector. And because these current collectors are different work functions, it can only go one way. So that is <laughs> what that is. Now let's have a look at it. So here it is. That's the um, bits and pieces mixed up together. So there's the um, functional material that I created in the previous video, birth of a new type of solar cell, some graphene that we've done a ton of ways of making graphene uh, on, and then uh, there's actually some nanofibrous cellulose in there that I haven't done anything about how to make nanofibrous cellulose yet. So I need to do some stuff on that for you. But it's only a binder. I, I figure that um, really plenty of things could be used as a binder. The benefit of nano um, nanofibrous cellulose is it's actually conductive, which really helps with the whole thing, of course. So that's what's in there anyway. And um, essentially, the nanofibrous cellulose is five grams to a litre. The um, graphene solution we put there is one gram to a litre. So uh, we put the one gram per litre was 100 mils of that and 100 mils of the five grams per litre nanofibrous cellulose and then um, uh, a little more five mils of the active material. So that's what's in that solution. And then obviously I put down the uh, actual strips here, so here it is. I put down the actual strips here and then just doctor bladed a coat of it on there, which is why well, you can't see anything because that's just amazingly thin. Now I've got it connected up on the um, meter here and it's in microamps and you can see that under the fluorescent lights it's actually astonishingly disappointing because it's generating a tiny, tiny bit. And um, I clicked that up and thought, oh dear, that could just be noise. That's not very good. And then the sun came out. And I thought, I'll tell you what, before I throw this all in the bin, bin, forget about it and never make another video. Let's go out and do it in the sun. Why not? Enough people said on the other one, test it in the sun. Let's test it in the sun. So I went outside. 
Okay, so here it is, and I'm just holding it uh, in the shed at the moment. You can see the reading. I'm going to hold it up to the sun in a second, and uh, it's wind. Well, it's autumn, so the sun's not particularly bright, but let's give it a go and see. And then back down in the shed again. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, I just realised I was covering that up. <laughs> what a what a dope. Anyway, hopefully you can read that. It's reading 5.5 .5 micrograms at the moment. It's dropping down 5.3. So hold it up to the sun. get up to about nine microamps. Anyway, interesting stuff. <laughs> How about that? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> there you go. That will generate, actually, um, I think, significant amounts. Now, obviously, we're talking microamps, and you've got about, what, 20 square centimetres there of active material. So it's <laughs> not going to power your house anytime soon, but it really is an interesting effect. I mean, this is transparent. So the question really is, what would a block of 3D do? I mean, if we stick it in some gel, for instance, and make it a big old block, what are we going to get out of it? How long is it going to last? That kind of thing. I mean, I've been doing tests with it for a couple of days, and it's doing fine. But in the um, grand scheme of things, of course, a couple of days is not a solar cell on your roof. But I'm obviously finding this really exciting. I mean, it's a bit like being let loose in a sweet shop, to be honest. So there you go. I hope that was of interest to you. And thank you very much for watching.